All right, guys, we are back again to talk about Sweet 16 and high school football. And I understand I was on Twitter being ragged this week because <laughs> you gave picks and I didn't. I did. And yeah. you Let's me hear on your picks. You dogged me on Twitter. <laughs> dog me on Twitter. You put me on the spot and then you didn't make Look, your own at, predictions. At the beginning of the year, I made all my predictions. They were in the paper. I picked Mallet Creek, I picked Butler, and I picked Providence. I'm going to stick to it. I'm not, it. I'm not changing. And I had Christian in the private schools. I, you know, fill up my emails, tell me I'm wrong. <laughs> Got to pick somebody. You know, I can't pick everybody. But shout that. out to uh, the kid at Vance Donovan Spencer. Yeah. 405 yards, 30 carries, 215 yards and a quarter. That's ridiculous. I mean, the, that's just, against I mean, the fighting Mike Newsoms <laughs> of A.L. Brown. I mean, that was a good team that he did it against. That yeah. wasn't the Holy Sisters of the Poor. First time ever in Mecklenburg County history a player has gone for 405. And that same night, Saturday night, um, the kid of South Iredale goes three, uh, Chris Holmes goes 372 yards and sets the Iredale County record. And that's on amazing. Friday night, Victory Christian's Josh Allen, Miami of Ohio commit, goes for 339 yards. In a game, I mean, what's going on with the running backs? There's something backs? in the air, man. Yeah, oh, that's yeah. crazy. We, I mean, those are some impressive numbers. Yeah, I mean, and, and to yeah. break a, a county record like uh, the kid from Vance did, I mean, there's a lot of good running backs that came before him that he that he beat out. Elijah there. Hood didn't mm-hmm. do it. Brian Knuckles didn't mm-hmm. do it. Those are two of the best players I've ever seen. Yeah. You know, they they didn't get there. Alvin Pierman at Country Day didn't do it. I mean, that's, that's impressive. Yeah, that's that, just really impressive that uh, that he can do that. And that's a, you know, his coach said this is something that people will always remember. I, I think so, but. The way records are falling now, <laughs> who knows? <laughs> who knows? Every week I'm like updated in the Mecklenburg County record book. Sweet 16, a lot of movement. Concord wins and moves down. Yeah, I'm Except not sure. That. I'm not sure what happened there. They stayed about the same place, I believe. In was it me, Rocky so. Reed? Wasn't me. <laughs> so I'm not really sure what happened there, but uh, yeah, the, I think the big move was York uh, going down a little bit and Rock Hill coming up a little bit after that. Well, game but on Friday, Northwestern was the team we thought at the beginning of the year was going to make a run to mm-hmm. a state championship, and it looks like that's the team that they're becoming. They had some mm-hmm. struggles, but they moved uh, the pretty hard to quarterback. Mm-hmm. And how do you move an all-state wide receiver who may be one of the best wide receivers in state history? The quarterback, and now he's playing even better. I guess you just you you want to get your best player the ball however you can. I mean, he's right like now. The best you got to pick a player of the year right now. Who don't right see now. you? Now you're not gonna put me on the spot again. Like yes, that. right now, <laughs> player of the year. Is it Dupree Hart? <sighs> Offensive player of the year. I think he makes a good argument, just not just because of the numbers, but because he's also playing out of position. What about he's, Mr. He's video playing. game up there in Lake Norman? That'd be another one. Nobody, so, I mean, there's, nobody there's talks about Josh Sadowski. He's, no. he's on pace for another 2000, 2000 season. I mean, he's nuts. There's a lot of guys. That's why we're so It's only week, uh, what, seven, eight? Williams we got time to Williams figure it out. Williams Butler? Mm-hmm. There's a lot of players. Yeah. What do you think? DeJoy at Davidson Day? I, I don't know. <laughs> that, that, that's, that's, that's too many to pick from. There's a lot of, there's there's a lot of good players around right right I, I do have a favorite on defense. I'm going to keep my mouth shut for right now. Uh, games this week. We have West Charlotte playing advanced. West Charlotte's rebounding on the Mo Collins wonderful job mode mm-hmm. that you're doing yep. with the kids. Three and three, um, more wins than they had all of last year. They're going to play Vance. Vance is five and one. Had one little hiccup. They almost beat Richmond County mm-hmm. on the road. They beat South Point on the road. I mean, they they're a legitimate team. Donovan Spencer obviously is a legitimate running back. They're getting going to get Jonathan Lafetti back, one of the best players in North, in North Carolina. But can they concentrate on West Charlotte and not think about Mallet Creek, the game they really they want you guys Mallet Creek? in two weeks? Uh, that's the big question. I think if they do fall to West Charlotte, that's why. I mean, just kind of looking ahead. But I, I just think, I mean, they got, they got a game. good, yeah, it's a track, I mean, but they got a good, good coaching staff there. I think they're going to be focused for West Charlotte. And they just got so much talent advanced. I think they can they can still, you know, even if they come out a little slow, a little trappy there, I think they can still come out and win that game. Is this game matching two of your favorites for Coach of the Year, Brandon Advance and Collins at West Charlotte? Yes, absolutely. So he's giving up his, his votes for Coach of the Year and Player of the Year. Mm-hmm. She, you're making me just make all the picks. <laughs> Who do you think? Uh, coach of the year right now? It's hard to say. I mean, there's a lot of guys. But mm-hmm. Brand, I mean, Brand's doing a wonderful job to take Vance to where they are. It's pretty impressive. I think right now, coach of the midseason, I would give to Aaron Brand. Yep. But it, there's just so many there's, guys out there. There's a lot of games doing, to play. I mean, Harden at, at Providence is doing a wonderful job. Uh, mm-hmm. And even Palmieri. I mean, I, you know, people say it's easy to win because he has a lot of talent. Right. But he lost 16 starters. Right. I mean, right. what if they win a state championship? Right. And honestly, I mean, I don't see anybody. You better beat Mallet Creek this year <laughs> because all these guys come back <laughs> next year. You better beat them this year. And I'm yeah. not sure anybody's going to beat them because they're working out their passing game. Smith, is, you know, they, they have a little run now where they can practice stuff pretty much. And Smith is really starting mm-hmm. to pass the ball well. Joe Cox, the new offense coordinator, is getting his plan put in place. Mm-hmm. And their defense, while they've given up some kind of weird, you know, 27 points to West Charlotte, I kind of, right. you know, 
Right. Scratch my head on that one, but I think their defense is still the best in the state, and I think come playoff time, that's not a team I yeah. want to play. They're just going to get better, yeah, because they're young guys, and yeah. so the problems they had early on were just young guys getting used to it yeah. and kind of getting the flow, and they're just going to get better. You're not going to score 50 points on Mallet Creek, mm -hmm. and they may score 50 on you. <laughs> <laughs> I still, I still look at them as the favorite to win the state championship. But uh, other games this week, real quick, Davidson Day and Country Day. Davidson Day, are they legitimate? They're going to find out this week. They're playing yeah. a really good private school team. Country Day nearly beat undefeated Weddington last week. Yeah, I mean, we talked about last week that Country Day, you know, the, the easy pick was Weddington, but, you know, that's a really great coach with Bob Whitman down there at Country Day. They're always dangerous. Uh, and I think they really proved themselves with that yeah. game, yeah. Uh, losing on a last-second field goal. Um, I just I, I love that Davidson Day comes out and plays with Charlotte Country Day and, and Charlotte Latin to really see where they are those league, big really. private school. I do too. Yeah. I mean, because that would be a great league to see all those teams there. So, yeah. uh, I, but I think Davidson Day is for real. I know they're a small roster and all that stuff, but they've only had 18 they've players last time teams. we saw. Them. I know. <laughs> Coach Greer, you need to recruit some more boys <laughs> up there in Davidson. I, if you have 18 players going against Country Day, I think they're going to be in trouble. Now they have yeah. the other five kids back, plus the the, the guard that got hurt his neck uh, in the game, Chase Byram, I think his name is. I think they're going to have a shot, but Country Day is definitely going to have a numbers advantage. They're playing that Country Day. is going to be sold out. Yep. Uh, I think that's going to be a game that's in the 30s. I think that favors Davidson Day. If it's in the 20s, I think it favors Country Day. I'm going to pick Davidson Day to win. Mm -hmm. uh, last game is the biggest one of the week. you got number two, Mallet Creek, playing number 13, Huff. This is hard for Mallet Creek because it's, it is a trap game, but right. it's also a big-time game for first place against a team that doesn't like them. And Huff obviously wants to prove that they're legitimate because a lot of people kind of lost faith in Huff with two early losses. So how do you see that game? Yeah, Mallory Creek's really going to have to watch out for Huff because Huff, you know, I always being the, with Mallory Creek being the top team, they're always going to have that target and all that kind of stuff. But, yeah, especially because Huff, you know, came in with a lot of um, expectations mm -hmm. and people are kind of, you know, shrugging off. I mean, I don't think they're as good as people thought they would be. So they've got that motivation, too. It's a rivalry, a conference rivalry. I mean, there's all kinds of stuff. So Malachi's really got to watch There's out a there. lot of dislike yeah. between them. I mean, yeah. Let's be honest. I mean, these teams do not like each other. They're very close rivals. They're conference rivals. I think Mallet Creek has something that Huff wants, you know, and, and I think Mallet Creek kind of resented a little bit some of the attention that Huff was getting, and it's, you know, mm -hmm. it's going to be a knockdown, drag-out fight. But I, I think Mallet Creek's defense is going to shut down Huff's offense, and I think Mallet Creek's offense is going to score on Huff's defense. And I think, ladies and gentlemen, that's going to be the formula for Huff, I mean, for rather, for Mallet Creek to go on and win the 2014 North Carolina 4AA State Championship. Yes, I said it. Fill my email up. Catch you next week. <laughs>